Empire scientists, welcome to Rise and Shine. I'm Courtney Cochran. And I'm Frisbee. Well, hello, Frisbee. We are ready to blast off with you into today's science lesson. Frisbee, do you know how we use science in our everyday lives? <gasps> uh, I don't know, but I bet you're gonna tell me. <laughs> yeah, we use science every day in gardening and lawn care, oh, wow. cooking and baking, oh, taking better. care of our vehicles, <sighs> and cleaning up the neighborhood. That's great. Did you know that there are very special jobs in our community that use science ideas to protect our resources, our environment, and our communities? Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell me more. Okay. I'm actually going to give you some examples of human problems in our community. And I want you to use your problem solving skills to think of someone in the community who has a job that helps protect our resources in our environment and helps solve that problem. Oh, I didn't know we were going to have a test today. Oh, yes, we are, Frisbee. I hope you're ready. Mm -hmm. Here's problem number one. Lightning struck a tree in the neighborhood Ooh. and now it's on fire. Who can we call to solve the problem and prevent the fire from spreading and destroying other things? Oh, I know, I know this one. I know this one. Uh, my great-great-grandfather was a Dalmatian, and he rode on a fire truck. It's a fireman! Oh, very good, Frisbee. That's exactly right. Firefighters work hard every day to respond to fire alarms, hazardous materials issues, medical emergencies, and other emergencies that threaten our resources and environment. They're a huge help to our community. Oh, yeah, they do a great job. Yes, they do. Okay, are you ready for problem number two? No, oh, I didn't know there was going to be multiples. <laughs> there sure are. All right. All right, here we go. Too many people in the community are feeding the animals in the nearby park, and the animals are becoming way too friendly with the humans. Oh. Some of them are even becoming aggressive because they want more food from the humans. So who can we call to offer educational programs that will help the community understand how to treat the wildlife in the park? Mm. Well, I, I think I know this one because I can never do this job because I don't like roughing it. It's a park ranger. <laughs> That's right, Frisbee. You're on a roll. Yeah. Park rangers do all kinds of helpful work in our parks and other protected areas. They are essential to keeping those beautiful public areas clean and safe and available for everyone to enjoy. They also do a great job. Yes, they do. All right, let's try one more, oh. and this is going to be the most challenging of all. All right, lay it on me. Okay, here we go. The community has been experiencing a very long dry spell, and meteorologists are saying that it will probably last a lot longer. In fact, the community is experiencing a drought. <gasps> Homeowners, city planners, and farmers are wondering how will they be able to keep the plant life alive and thriving now that they can't use as much water? Oh, oh. Oh, Miss, Miss Cochran, you must be a lumberjack because you've got me stumped. Yeah, so the person who's going to help us solve this problem, if you guessed it at home, you're right, landscape architects. Oh, yeah. more like architecture. <laughs> You've got to be one smart cookie to know that one. Mm -hmm. Landscape architects have to combine knowledge from all subject areas to help humans and the environment coexist. They create solutions that are specialized for the people and the environment of the community. We have a lot of human problems in our very human world. Fortunately, there are people in the community who work hard to solve those problems. The next time you're out in the neighborhood, Frisbee, I want you to think about the ways community members work to protect the resources and the environment in your community, okay? I definitely will do that. All right, thank you, Frisbee. Thank you for joining me today, and remember to keep exploring and keep discovering. Yeah!